The Emperor's Nightingale, retold from the original by Hans Christian Andersen. Once upon a time in China, there was an emperor who lived in the most beautiful palace in the world. In fact, everything in it was so beautiful and so delicate that his courtiers daren't touch anything. And the palace gardens were even more wonderful than the palace itself. They were filled with the most exotic flowers, which gave out such lovely perfume that all the emperor's courtiers swooned with delight whenever they walked there. His subjects were allowed to wander in the gardens between dawn and dusk, and the emperor spent many hours talking to them. One day he came across a local fisherman. Did you know that a nightingale with the sweetest singing voice in the world lives in your gardens? said the fisherman. This is news to me, said the emperor and the emperor who was used to getting everything he wanted commanded his courtiers to search high and low for the nightingale for one whole day his courtiers searched they looked in the golden pagodas and in the jewelled summer houses they shouted up into the tall trees with their luscious green branches and exotic flowers by dusk the courtiers' voices were hoarse with shouting for the nightingale let us retire for a cup of china tea my friends said the chief courtier so they sat down in one of the golden pagodas and discussed where they would look next and as the kitchen maid was serving the tea she overheard their conversation i know where the nightingale lives said the kitchen maid i hear it singing every evening when i go and visit my sick mother so all the courtiers followed her into the gardens until they came to the tallest tree Look. He's sitting above us in that tree, said the kitchen maid, and there the little nightingale sat, singing his heart out. But he looks so ordinary, said the chief courtier, who was a bit of a snob. The little nightingale may have looked like an ordinary bird, but he certainly had an extraordinary voice, and when he had finished his song, the kitchen maid said, Sweetest nightingale, the emperor of China has commanded that we take you to him. He wants to hear you sing. I feel very honoured that he has asked me, said the nightingale. So the nightingale followed the happy band of courtiers and the kitchen maid to the emperor's palace. The emperor had made elaborate preparations for the nightingale. In the great banqueting hall he had set up an amazing golden perch for the little bird, and when the nightingale entered the hall, the emperor gently sat him on his finger and led him to the jewelled perch. Sing for me, little nightingale, said the emperor. So the nightingale started to sing straight away, and his song sounded so sweet that tears rolled down the old emperor's cheeks. The nightingale was such a success with the emperor that he was given his own special cage at court. He was allowed out in the palace gardens twice a day, but twelve servants had to accompany him, and each one had to hold on to a thin silk ribbon that was attached to the bird's legs. There were many gossips in the emperor's kingdom, and whenever people met in the street, the nightingale was the most popular topic of conversation. The emperor even opened up his palace to the public for one day, so that his subjects could come inside and look at the nightingale in his golden cage and listen to his beautiful voice. Each day his subjects would bring presents to the emperor as a thank you for letting them see the beautiful bird. But one day the chief courtier delivered a package to the emperor, and nobody knew who had sent it. It was so elaborately wrapped that the emperor couldn't wait to open it. The impatient emperor ripped off the wrapping paper, and there were gasps of amazement from the courtiers when they saw the fabulous gift. It was a clockwork nightingale that was made of silver and gold and studded with emeralds, rubies and sapphires. In its back was a little key, and when the emperor wound it up, it sang a little song. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the audio ebook. I won't keep you for long. Last year I was demonetized by YouTube and so I lost all opportunity to earn. But I love sharing the audio ebooks with you so much, I carried on. If you value what I'm doing here, please consider heading over to my other channel, Book Club, and hitting that subscribe button as a sign of support. The link's in the description. Now, back to the book. Enjoy. Let's hear the two nightingales sing a duet together, said the chief courtier. The emperor then wound up the clockwork bird and commanded the real nightingale to sing at the same time. But each bird sang in a different key, and all the courtiers clapped their hands over their ears because of the terrible din. Stop that dreadful noise, said the chief courtier. 
The real nightingale stopped singing straight away, but the clockwork bird couldn't stop. He went on and on, singing the same song over and over again. The courtiers were so busy staring at the jeweled bird and were so entranced by its solo performance that they didn't notice that the real nightingale had flown away. Let the real nightingale sing for us now, said the emperor. But when he turned towards the cage, he saw that it was empty. Where has the real nightingale gone, said the emperor. But his courtiers weren't worried. They told the emperor that he was left with the best bird. And still the clockwork bird kept singing the same song over and over again. But it was a complicated song, and the courtiers weren't bored with it because they hadn't learned it by heart yet. Everyone was impressed with the clockwork bird, but nobody praised it more than the master of the emperor's music. Listen to me, he said. The real nightingale is not reliable. We never know exactly what he's going to sing. But with the clockwork bird, we know where we are. He has one song and no other. We can even open him up and look inside the cylinder and find how the song was created. Indeed, the clockwork bird has no secrets from us. You are absolutely right, cried the courtiers, but the fisherman didn't agree. You are all making a big mistake, he shouted. The real nightingale sings from the depth of his heart, and that is something that a clockwork toy could never do. But nobody took any notice of the fisherman, and the real nightingale was banished from the kingdom. Although the Emperor of China had more treasures and wealth than anyone could possibly count, nothing was more precious to him than the clockwork bird. It held such a special place in his heart that the Emperor let it sleep on a soft velvet cushion beside his bed. And it wasn't only the Emperor of China who had a deep affection for him. Kings, queens and emperors from all over the world had heard about the amazing bird and had sent him lavish presents. The most exquisite little golden caskets and priceless jewels were piled up around the famous bird's cushion. Every night the bird would sing the emperor to sleep with his familiar little song, and within a few weeks the emperor knew the song off by heart. The emperor enjoyed the nightingale's song so much that he often hummed along to the tune. But one night, when the emperor was just dozing off and the nightingale was singing its familiar song, there was a sudden clanging sound. Whirr, clang, bang, went the bird. All its cogs whirled around, and then it was completely still. My lovely nightingale, what is wrong? cried the emperor as he leapt out of bed. And then he rang the bell and called for his chief courtier. Fetch the court physician, cried the emperor when the chief courtier arrived. But when the physician appeared, there was nothing he could do. Fetch the royal watchmaker, said the emperor to the chief courtier. When the watchmaker appeared, he took one look at the bird and muttered, This bird is going to be difficult to fix. After much muttering and tinkering, he finally mended the bird and then gave the emperor this stern warning. If you play it more than once a year, it may never work again. So the emperor kept the bird as an ornament and daren't play it again. A year later, the emperor fell ill. He became so ill, in fact, that he could hardly get out of bed, and he soon turned into a very grumpy old emperor, as he didn't have many visitors to talk to, and talking was his favourite pastime. Because he had so much time to himself, he was haunted by the song of the clockwork nightingale. The familiar tune kept creeping into his head, and he just couldn't get rid of it. Oh, how the tune of that wretched bird haunts me, he said as he tossed and turned under the covers. If I could get the tune out of my head, I'm sure I could feel well again. And as he spoke, he heard the sweetest sound coming from outside his window. He looked outside, and there sat his old friend, the real nightingale. Suddenly the emperor's head was filled with its delicate silvery notes. I thought I was going to die, but you have saved my life, little nightingale. Keep on singing and never stop. Your song is a thousand times sweeter than the song of the clockwork bird. The nightingale continued to sing, and the emperor soon felt much better. The clockwork bird's tune went out of his head completely. I am so glad that you came back to our kingdom, said the emperor to the real nightingale. I must confess that I was dazzled and fooled by the clockwork bird's glittering coat. How can you ever forgive me? You have really paid me the greatest honour by shedding tears when I sang for you, said the nightingale. I don't bear you a grudge. Then the nightingale flew from the branch of the tree and perched on the emperor's finger. 
and as the nightingale continued to sing his song, his gentle warbling lulled the emperor into a deep, deep sleep. The nightingale stayed at the emperor's bedside for the rest of the night, and at sunrise the emperor was woken by the bird singing his beautiful song. He was so happy to see him sitting there, and he turned to him and said, You see that clockwork bird over there? Every time I look at it, it reminds me what a fool I've been. I must get rid of it. Don't do that, said the nightingale. It hasn't done you any harm. Oh, what wise words you speak, little nightingale, said the emperor. You are right to tell me to keep the bird. And as for you, you are welcome to roam freely throughout my palace whenever you like. The End if you value what I'm doing here, please consider heading over to my other channel, Book Club, and hitting that subscribe button as a sign of support. The link's in the description.